Dear students, today we shall understand the mathematical models and their components. So let's get started. Firstly, these models are just like economic models because they also try to simplify the complex life that we live in. And there are some building blocks, some ingredients of these models, which are variables, constants, and parameters. Let's have a look at a model in a mathematical manner and see how it looks like. As you can see that we have an, uh, a mathematical model which is showing that QD is a function of price. It's a very famous law which is known as the law of demand. What you see here is that we are using algebra in order to make this model. You are also well familiar with the trigonometry. Trigonometry also gets used, but not in this case. That is not a part of this course. So you see that we can see some symbols. What these symbols represent, let us try to understand. And just below this, you can see that there is another example that shows trigonometric ratios. Just like I told you, it's not a part of the course, but still we have seen an example just to know how they look like. Let's start with the variable. Firstly, we should understand the word variable, something that has the ability to change. So when we look around, there are so many variables even in our daily life. For example, our age, our knowledge, weight, temperature, and there are so many other variables that surround us. But when we use mathematical models and we deploy variables in them, then we usually use the notation of x, y, and z, both in lowercase and the uppercase. Now I'm taking you to the list of economic variables that we might see in economic analysis. Uh, as you can see, demand, supply, price, individual income, consumption, investment, savings, revenue, costs, profits, wages, they all appear with their symbols. So we might confront these variables. From the macroeconomic point of view, we have gross domestic product, which is represented by GDP. And then we have government expenditure, there are taxes, supply of money, demand for money, interest rate, inflation, exports and imports, and there, may, there might be other variables as well. The purpose of showing you this list is to affirm that there is a certain number of variables that we use in economic analysis. Now, when we allot a certain value to a variable, we say that we have done the process of freezing the variable. For example, if we take the uh, case of excess supply in real market, uh, there's a difference of quantity demanded and quantity supplied. If we have the numerical values of these two variables, that is QD and QS, we can get the numerical value of excess supply. So, by freezing the variables, we can get the precise value which is easily interpretable. We can say that it's a big value, there's a big excess supply or a small one. As you can see, it's 100 units in this hypothetical example. There are other examples as well, just like profit firm. It can also be calculated by the difference of the revenue and the costs. And by freezing these values, we have been able to find the profit of a firm. So it is very helpful to get a, a precise values. Let's take a macroeconomic example. You are all familiar with the equation y is equal to c plus i plus g plus x minus m. The national income determination in a fourth sector economy. If we have these values as, as we can see here. We can put the values, plug in them and get the final result. That is the national income in a four sector economy. It is done in this light. Now, what are solution values? Once we solve the system of equations, when we have more than one equations, we solve them simultaneously. And then we get the values of those variables. These are known as the solution values. Mathematically speaking, it's a good thing to have the solution values. But from economic point of view, it is critical because it can give us equilibrium in the real market, the equilibrium price and the equilibrium output that we have been trying to calculate using the diagrams and 
by, you know, writing text. But it can be done using the mathematical models as well. As you can see, I have listed all those solution values that we found in the previous examples. But there is a better example and a more commonly used example, and that is of demand supply their interaction. The solution values, they show that there is an equilibrium output and there is equilibrium price. Diagrammatically, you are very well familiar with this, but we shall do it in, in a mathematical way as we go ahead in those lectures. When you look at variables, there are two types as well that, that come from another angle. If we can find the value of the variables from using those equations or that system or that model that we are given, then we can say it's an endogenous variable because endo means internal and generous means to produce because the value it is getting generated from inside the model using the equations of the model, we can say it is an endogenous variable. However, if the values cannot be found and they are already given, then exogenous variables is the suitable term for them because exo mean that the variable, its value is given to us and we are not calculating it using the given equations. And these exogenous variables, they can have an impact on the equilibrium. As you can see in the diagram, price and the output, it is a, a couple of values which are endogenous variables, but exogenous variable, that is income, is affecting the relationship. How it is affecting? It is shifting the curve, either outside or inside. So you see exogenous variables shift the curves of the relationship between the endogenous variables. And lastly, we should know that at macroeconomic level, variables like political will or other policy variables like money supply, tax rates, and government expenditures, these variables are usually treated as exogenous variables, but not necessarily because in some cases they might be internalized and they might become endogenous variables. Thank you.